I invite you to take a breath, perhaps close your eyes and just feel the force of gravity and notice how it holds you and anchors you in this place. And we acknowledge that we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. And prayerfully holding these realities in our hearts and in our minds, let's move into a prayer of the four directions and seasons. O Spirit of the East, to which we turn, grateful for sunrise, birth, and resurrection, open us fully to the possibilities of new birth and transformation within ourselves, our communities, and our planet. Give us the courage to sow seeds and plant trees for generations yet to come. Help us celebrate the joy of every kind of birth as miracle and promise. O Spirit of the South, thanks be to you for the warm winds of summer, nurturing growth. Fill us with a youthful vibrancy and optimism that we may sustain hope for a loving relationship with Earth and all her creatures. Keep us in solidarity with peoples and places of the global South and set our hearts afire for an indivisible justice. O Spirit of the West, for your many hued sunsets and life giving rain clouds, we give you thanks. Grant us the steady hand of adulthood. Nurture us for the journeys we face from day to day and bless the place we call home. Help us to care for the sick, the frail, and those in any special need whom we name at this time. May our care and concern work together for human healing and the mending of a broken world. O Spirit of the North, home of winter winds and the season of dark anticipation, we thank you for the majesty of polar bears and snow owls, of dancing northern lights, and of the fish and seals that sustain life there. Fill us with the wisdom of elders that we may know when and how to speak for the sake of the earth and all her inhabitants. Comfort the elderly who are dying or bereaved and take away our fear of death, that in returning to earth we may see the promise of resurrection. Amen. And so, my friends, the Christ Lake calls you here into this time of worship, into being part of this community of faith at Islington United. We don't think the same, love the same, or vote the same, but we are part of a community that's trying hard to follow in the way of Jesus. And so, we welcome you to this time of worship. It's my privilege to share in leadership this morning with Amy Crawford, who is one of our voluntary associate ministers and serves at the General Council Office. We are grateful to continue the work in these last two weeks following uh, Indigenous Peoples Day into what it means 
to, uh, for us to do the work of reconciliation. And so we invite you to this time of worship. May the Spirit speak to us all. often hear that hymn at harvest time, but the strawberries are blooming and the fruits of the garden and the flowers are ready. The summer solstice has passed and the light lengthens into the summer days. And at this time we pause and give thanks for those who we've lost, who are holding in our hearts that may have celebrated birthdays or anniversaries at this time of year. And so we honor and remember them. And we give thanks for all those teachers and learners, for those that are ending years, for the grief and missing of some in this season that haven't had their proms or their graduations or their times to say goodbye to their teachers or their classes. We mark the rites of passage in our lives. We hold that light as it burns today. May we be reminded that in the seasons of our lives, God is with us, and we celebrate in those times of crossing over. I was there to hear your morning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice 
place to the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When I was there to cheer you all. You were raised to praise the living Lord to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old nor longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. Gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes. I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there. the day you were baptized to see your life unfold.
Good morning, everyone. It's Michelle here, your Children and Families Ministry Coordinator. I wanted to take this time to wish all of our children and youth a very happy end of the school year. You all have worked so hard and should be very proud of yourselves. I also want to thank all of our parents who have been supporting our young ones from home during this time. Further, I wanted to give a very special shout out to our Godly Play storytellers, our door persons, and our toddler room helpers. We greatly appreciate your support during the school year. I now would like to invite all of our children and young ones for a time of godly play following the service at 12 o'clock. You can email me at michelle at islingtonunited.org in order to receive the Zoom link. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your service, and we'll see you soon. Let's invite the words of the psalmist into this moment and into our hearts this day. How long, O oh Lord? How long will you forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. And we turn to words of scripture from Matthew. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple Truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. My friends, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. We gather today to continue to mark the Indigenous Day of Prayer and National Indigenous Peoples Day. We come to reflect on the commitment of the United Church of Canada to right relations for all who call this church their home. And today, especially for our Indigenous friends. We come carefully, prayerfully, thoughtfully and humbly to this delicate and important task. The lectionary reading from the Gospel of Matthew today is compelling as we reflect on indigenous history in Canada and the role of people of faith in this history. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. Without knowing the gospel story, the first intuition of indigenous peoples of this land was to welcome Europeans as they arrived here. Many indigenous people offered hospitality. They offered generosity. They shared the bounty of the land and they shared their ways of survival and the wisdom of their teachings. 
And yet, what happened? Did indigenous people receive the reward of the righteous? As much as we might like to think that the first settlers, my ancestors among them, were righteous prophets with much to offer, some were not. Perhaps they were too interested in getting their own reward to consider the reward of the one who welcomed them. Perhaps some of us are still too interested in considering our own needs and our own rewards to consider the needs and rewards of our indigenous friends. A large part of the problem may lie in the identity that Christians seem to take in the texts. We seem, seem to identify ourselves as prophets. Many believed that we deserved a warm welcome because we came bringing the good news of Jesus Christ to some little ones. Too bad these Christians didn't understand that indigenous people had some prophetic words of their own to speak. Too bad Christians didn't welcome the righteous ways of indigenous people. Imagine what else we might have received if that had happened. Perhaps this is what moderator Bob Smith was feeling when in 1986 he offered, on behalf of the United Church of Canada, the first of two apologies to Indigenous people. Read it along with me. Long before my people journeyed to this land, your people were here and you received from your elders an understanding of creation and of the mystery that surrounds us all that was deep and rich and to be treasured. We did not hear you when you shared your vision. In our zeal to tell you of the good news of Jesus Christ, we were closed to the value of your spirituality. We confused Western ways and culture with the depth and breadth and length and height of the gospel of Christ. We imposed our civilization as a condition of accepting the gospel. We tried to make you be like us, and in so doing, we helped to destroy the vision that made you what you were. As a result, you and we are poorer, and the image of the Creator in us is twisted, blurred, and we are not what we are meant by God to be. We ask you to forgive us and to walk with us in the Spirit of Christ so that our peoples may be blessed and God's creation healed. Two years later, in 1988, at the 32nd General Council, the indigenous church acknowledged the apology, expressing their hope that the church would live into its words and that the apology was not just symbolic, but that the words were sincere and would be followed by concrete actions. The apology was acknowledged, but not accepted. Actions had to come before acceptance. Now, a couple of weeks ago, my friend and former colleague Robin Magali, via Facebook Live, talked about her experience 20 years after that first apology, when she was at General Council 39, and the United Church agreed to sign the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement. 
The council was invited to read the apology again as they prepared to vote on the settlement agreement. It was a powerful moment for Robin. She decided that if she was going to read it and make the apology authentically, she was going to mean it and act on it. Once again, in 2006, the indigenous people, in their wisdom, acknowledged the apology, but did not accept it. Robin asked, if someone really important in your life, someone with whom you have a strong relationship, said that an apology you offered wasn't enough, wouldn't you try again? Wouldn't you do everything you needed to do to make things right in the relationship? Robin continues to do the work she needs to do to practice friendship, and she does it publicly, intentionally, and explicitly. And she calls on individuals and communities of faith to continue to do the work not just offer apologies or acknowledgement. Now, having said that, a genuine apology is important and meaningful. I choose to believe that contrition was expressed by the church to indigenous peoples and that it was genuine and heartfelt. But I also know that acceptance of an apology and true reconciliation is a long and complicated process. Welcoming a righteous word does not always come easily, and especially when it comes on the heels of some decidedly unrighteous behavior. And that remains the challenge to true reconciliation. The prophetic and righteous journey toward reconciliation and right relations continued for the United Church of Canada as they made a second apology for residential schools. It continued when, in 2009, Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission began their work to examine the history and legacy of Canada's Indian residential schools, and bring some closure and healing for those who suffered abuse in those schools, most of which were run by churches and people of faith. Church leaders attended the hearings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and held those stories in their hearts. Now, I think it's important to note that many indigenous people aren't sure that reconciliation is the right term for what needs to happen. You see, reconciliation implies restoring a relationship to a former level of mutual warmth and trust, affection and intimacy. In most cases, no such former relationship existed between indigenous people and European settlers in Canada. In most cases, our relationship has been marked by suspicion and distrust on both sides. But even considering this, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was initiated by indigenous people. It was the idea and work of indigenous people from start to finish, all with the aim of reconciliation, not blame, not restitution, not score settling, but reconciliation, of getting the story right so that together we could begin a new story Non-Indigenous people in Canada should stand amazed and grateful and humbled by this. 
After all that's happened, indigenous people still hold out a hand of friendship. The United Church welcomed the release of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's final report, and along with other churches that ran residential schools, we acknowledged our part in this assault on indigenous families, culture, language, spiritual traditions. And we stated that we continue to share a responsibility to ensure that the task of reconciliation does not end today. This would not have happened without the vulnerability and bravery of residential school survivors. Our current moderator, Richard Bott, has said, the work of building right relations between non-indigenous people and the indigenous peoples of this land is always ongoing because relationships must be built on truth and trust, and those must be built up every day. Our church is committed to living out the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, which Canada signed on to in 2007, and continues the work through a task group and with the caretakers of our Indigenous circle. In the midst of changes to our structure as a church, we decided it was important to make room for indigenous leaders to determine their own future and their own place and their own way of educating leaders. We honor that work and we continue that work. My friends, the psalmist cried out, how long, how long must I bear pain in my soul and sorrow in my heart? My friends, even with all the work that the United Church of Canada, other churches, organizations, and individuals have accomplished, we cannot stay still. We must still lament and we must still commit to righteous and prophetic actions. We must still ask, how long? How long will indigenous people in Canada wait for a cup of cold water? How long will they wait for that cup of cold water to be clean? How long before there is adequate health care and education and housing for those who live on reserve? How long until the justice system treats indigenous people with the same rights and freedoms as non-indigenous people? There is no end to our ministry of reconciliation until we need no longer ask how long. And when, finally, we hear the words of acceptance and forgiveness, then we will know that we are truly reconciled. And that, my friends, will be good news for all of us. Thanks be to God. your 
children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children. So, God, we offer our prayers humbly for the invitation to listen anew, for the places where our ancestors and our story is part of this story. And we listen and experience the moments of welcome, of friendship, and our hearts hold the prayers and the stories of this long journey, this country of ours and its story, the ways our children are learning anew what it means to acknowledge the land and the peoples that were first here. And God, when we don't have the words. And when we hold the feelings of it all and yearn for your grace and wisdom, we pause and we pray and we ask you to hear your children praying. God, I give thanks today for that wisdom, for the ways that indigenous peoples have helped us be in relationship with this earth, 
this land for their stewardship and their teachings, for the ways that children are honored and nurtured and invited into rites of passage that remind them and tell them who they are. And as part of those bigger stories, we turn our prayers to families marking transitions this day. Transitions in work and in school, crossing over in ages and seasons of their lives and taking with them the learnings and the practices of each day acknowledging this land and the peoples that have gone before and the stories of now, the action that's called for and this work of making apology real in our actions. We do this, O oh God, with your strength and through your grace, making the road by walking. We do this following in the way of the one who called us into this peace, who showed us what it tasted like and what it felt like and who continued to cross over bridges and make way. And we remember that he taught his disciples to pray as they were learning. And out of this love, we sing this prayer together now. One call to action is watching how our church has used its resources and that when you offer in this time to the work of the church, it's connected to our general council work, the, the denomination across Canada, into this healing work and into the everyday tasks of being the church. We're grateful for this action that's courageous and brave in this time by placing checks in the mail and offering virtually on the website or sending an e-transfer to office at islingtonunited.org, you are part of this work of mending the world together. Thank you for being part of this chapter of the story.
kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see. Step enough for me. I was not ever thus, nor prayed that thou shouldst lead me on. I loved to choose and set my path. But now lead thou me on. I loved the garish day and spite of fears. Pride ruled my will. Remember. Torrent till the night is gone, and with the morn, those angel faces smile, which I have loved. Long since and lost a Let us pray our offering prayer together. Holy One, receive our offerings and transform them into compassion for others, into community for the lonely, and hope for the church and the world. Amen. Well, friends, this is our last worship experience before we move into summer services. And we will start coming to you live at 9.30 on Sunday mornings from our chapel. A little bit more relaxed, but we already know at home you're joining us in a relaxed and prayerful way. So we look forward to exploring this summer the theme of the gifts of the Spirit and how they're living out in your lives and what God's calling us to together. We'll have some fun. We'll pray and we'll continue to sing. And we look forward to this next season of being Islington United Church. If you haven't got your novel yet for Islington Reads, Let Me Be Like Water, I invite you to check out the novel spot. You've still got a week to be part of our first official book club together online. 
And I also know that today would have been a day to have a party. It would have been a time where we celebrated the Go Project and all that had been in their year season and prepare them for the summer. And since Alana Martin and the team can't be with us, I want to share with you a video of some of their rites of passage that have happened this year. We bless them and give thanks, not only for Go Project's call to justice, but for the way they're sharing good news in our world at this time. This June, we mark a transition in the relationship between the Go Project and Islington United Church. 14 years ago, this ministry was birthed out of an idea the youth here at the time and their leader, Michael Schuberg, had of a mission trip in their own backyard. In those 14 years, Go Project grew to reach over 500 youth, over 1,000 children, 60 children and youth leaders, and employed 145 summer staff. And that is not counting the volunteers and mission partners who make our programs as meaningful as they are. Some of you watching may have memories of driving youth to a mission site, baking them cookies and brownies, and witnessing their powerful learnings and leadership as they led worship here each summer. In those 14 years, Go Project has run programming in every province across Canada. And through their participation and leadership, 26 young people have discerned a call into paid leadership and ministry in the United Church of Canada. And I am one of them. These milestones and accomplishments are worth celebrating and noting. You birthed this and gave it the seed and nurturing to grow into what it has, a leader of innovative children and youth ministry within the United Church of Canada. It is now time for Go to spread its wings and as of June 1st, we are now an incorporated ministry of the United Church of Canada. With that means moving our operations to Shining Waters Regional Council. This changes our operational relationship with Islington, but does not change our desire to continue to partner with Islington through meaningful and impactful programming and ministry. You have not seen the last of us. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for all the support and nurturing soil you have given Go throughout the years to grow. And as we say at Go, you are a part of making the world a better place. Step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go, from the old things to the new. Keep me traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Round the corner of the world. I turn more and more about the world I learn all the new things that I see he'll be looking at along with me and it's from the old I travel to the new keep me traveling along with you and 
as I travel through the bad and good Keep me traveling the way I should Where I see no way to go You'll be telling me the way I know And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me traveling along with you Give me courage when the world is rough Keep me loving through the world is tough Leap and sing in all I do Keep me traveling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me traveling along with you You are old than the world can be You are younger than the life in me Ever old and ever new Keep me travelling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you Now you would be so tempted to travel from here to the Stuart East Hall for time of hospitality, but instead stay with us on the website online. Just scroll down a little bit and wait one or two minutes and a video will come up to pass the peace and share good news and time together as a community. If you have Facebook and you want to join us on the Islington United Facebook page for a live engagement, please do that as well. But go into your day surrounded by the unconditional love of the Creator and following in the way of the one who risked for love. And may the Spirit invite you into the path of peace. Amen.